Science used to be about empirical data. Now it seems like science is about politics and determining what's true is about who legislates the best and who votes and who makes laws the best. In 2009, when the Psychiatric Association made a determination that homosexuality was not a mental illness, that was all about lobbying. When the convention was held in San Francisco, I've been involved in a men's group for a dozen years or so, and I have seen this group become politicized. And I have been in, in situations, uh, in initiation of other men, where gay men have stepped into the middle of the circle and told a man who was questioning his sexuality, you are gay, accept it. Now, who is he to do that? Did you know that the vast majority, like 90%, of all males who have some sort of sexual experience in their formative teenage years later on in their life self-identify as heterosexual. Having a homosexual experience does not make you gay. What makes you gay is if you self-identify as being gay. By definition, you may think however it was that you came to be gay, but it is your determination. And there are many people out there who are still deciding, and they have the right, especially in their formative young years, to be able to weigh both sides of the equation. I had a chance to work with an organization called People Can Change, where they did workshops with people who were questioning and some who were gay um, and didn't want to be. Particularly in this group, they were Orthodox Jews. And they were following all the traditions, including not doing any kind of writing after Friday sun, sunset. And I was accompanying one of, the, one of the men there and writing for him because it was against their religion. And many of these religions are sending their sons, their young sons, to these kinds of groups. And here's the interesting thing, is that this guy that I was working with, and the majority of men in that group, had never experienced a homosexual act. And they were simply questioning and this group was giving them a chance to find out for themselves if they were really gay. If, if being attracted to men was their only alternative. And it also turns out that most of these men had psychological issues that went back to, to their younger years that confused them sexually. Again, most kids experiment and end up straight. And if there are people there in the elementary schools, in the public schools, saying, there's no question, uh, you're gay. Who are they to be doing that? Now, I've also been in circles with a, a men's group where a man had self-identified as being gay, and what he wanted was for his family to accept him being gay. I have no problem with that. If somebody in the family is gay and they're determined to be gay, I don't think they should be loved any less for it. Do I think it's a healthy lifestyle? No. Statistics have shown that most gay people say they wish they weren't gay because they're unhappy. And they're more susceptible to diseases and to relationship problems. Now, if you're gay and happy, fine, but why do you have to be militant about it? Why do you have to impose what it is you're doing? Why do you have to make a law in California that says it's illegal 
to help somebody who thinks they might be gay but isn't sure and to go in and proclaim them officially with a state stamp if you've got a question then yes you are gay what happened to what happened to morality i mean not to mention a freedom of choice this is this is an assault against religious freedom this is a uh, an assault on uh, children. This is child abuse. Um, and it's done at a state level and it's a shame. Shame on California. And shame on psychotherapy industry that just bent when there was political pressure. And anybody who tries to use that as a science doesn't understand the politics behind it. This is all politics. And it's got nothing to do with really caring about the sexual health identity of a human being. Especially at vulnerable ages.